A buck boost converter is a type of DC-DC converter that can either increase or decrease the DC voltages. Unlike a simple boost or buck converter, the buck boost configuration gives flexibility, as the output voltage can be higher or lower than the input depending on the duty ratio. At the heart of the circuit are four main components, an inductor, a capacitor, a diode, and a switch. The switch is usually a MOSFET or an IGBT, depending on the application and power levels. The operation of the buck boost converter can also be explained in two modes, depending on whether the switch is turned on or turned off. When the switch is turned on, current flows through the inductor and the inductor stores energy in its magnetic field. During this time, the diode is reverse biased and does not conduct. The load current is supplied entirely by the capacitor. When the switch is turned off, the inductor releases the energy it stored. This energy is delivered through the diode to the load as well as to recharge the capacitor. One of the important characteristics buck boost converter is that, the output voltage polarity is inverted with respect to the input. By continuously switching between these two modes using pulse width modulation, the buck boost converter can provide an output voltage that is either higher or lower than the input depending on the duty cycle. The duty ratio directly controls whether the output voltage steps up or steps down. The inductor determines the ripple current, and the capacitor helps to control the output voltage ripple. Now let's move on to the design example of a buck boost converter. In this example, we are going to design a converter for which the input voltage is 20 volts. The output voltage is required to be variable. It can range from 12 volts up to 42 volts. Other design requirements are as follows. The output voltage ripple should be less than 1%. The switching frequency is 25 kHz, and the load resistance is 10 ohms. Next, we apply the design formulas for the inductor and the capacitor. By substituting the given specifications into these formulas, we can determine suitable values of the inductor and capacitor for our design. Once the component values are calculated, the next step is to simulate the circuit in MATLAB Simulink. Create a new model. From the top menu, click on Library. This will open the Simulink Library browser. In the library, go to Simscape. From there, select Specialized Power Systems, and then go to Fundamental Blocks. Inside this section, open Electrical Sources and drag a DC battery into your project workspace. In the same way, drag and place a ground block, and also select an RLC block. Also, insert the duty cycle control for the switching signal. Place a IGBT switch. Place a diode. Now place a power GUI into your model. This power GUI block is an essential component. It acts as the control and analysis interface for all power electronic circuits built using these blocks. You can think of it as the brain or supervisor of your entire electrical network in Simulink. Without it, your model won't run if you're using specialized power system components. Now, add an ammeter and a voltmeter to monitor the current and voltage. And insert a scope to observe the waveforms. Double-click each block to edit its parameters and enter the values we calculated in our design example. For example, the value of inductor is 20 millihenry. And the value of capacitor is 220 microcoulomb. 
and the value of load is 10 ohms. Set the input voltage to 20 volts. Once these blocks are placed, rearrange them to form the basic circuit layout. and adjust the scope settings as you prefer for a clear display.